We're very pleased to have with us today Reverend Mr. B. Nkamuke, uh, who's with us from Nigeria. And he is studying here at Most Holy Trinity Seminary in Florida. He is a recent subdeacon and he'll be ordained a priest later this year. Um, very interested to hear um, his story and to learn about how he came here from Nigeria. And I suppose we'll, we'll start at the very beginning, Reverend. Uh, where in Nigeria were you born? And tell us a little bit about your family and um, how you were raised. Thank you. Um, I was born in the, in the South South, which is uh, currently Edo State. That's where I was born, but I'm from the southeastern Nigeria, Imo State. And um, I was, I'm the first of a family of uh, four, four boys. And uh, uh, so we raised in the Catholic Church, and uh, though not in the, in the, uh, what, we, we, I was born in uh, Novo Soto Catholic, and, uh, and uh, grew up in the church, and uh, so that's it. Um, I was not a, a convert from the Protestant church, but I was born in the, in the church, even though it was just in our service. Was your family a fairly fervent um, Nova Soro family? I know I come from that same kind of background, where you're a very strong Nova Soro family. Yeah, yeah, they're quite fervent, yeah, they were, yeah. Because, you know, at least we went to Mass and they said the rosary in the family, and uh, at least for us, that's uh, that's what we did, and you know, to be careful to make sure that uh, we we studied about the faith, catechisms, and because uh, when we think of the sort of here in America, you know, it's guitar masses, and I, I have to imagine is Nigeria maybe a bit more traditional, maybe not as crazy. The Nova Soro is maybe a bit more conservative, or is that not true? Yeah, they, they, yeah, it's actually more conservative than, than you have here. We don't yet have the guitar masses, but uh, I'm surprised it comes soon here. Yeah, but mm -hmm. for now, we don't have those. The once in a while, you, know, you find some odd things done in the in the church, but it's not the the it's not common yet. You know. So we would say the Nova Soro is not so bad. Yeah, there. yeah, absolutely. They still, they still believe some Catholic yeah, things. Yeah, they still do. Okay, so you were raised in this. Uh, I assume, did you go to a Catholic school? Um, no, not uh, entirely. I, 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 I spent part of my grade school, what we call primary school. I spent two years in a Catholic school, a uh, Catholic private school. But after that, it was... Uh, I went to the government school after that. Yeah. And how are the how are the government schools in Nigeria like? Are are they good schools? Is it uh, American public schools can be fairly I mean liberal, terrible in some ways. How are the government schools in Nigeria? I, I suppose I'm asking the bigger question of what is Nigerian society like because the government school might reflect some yeah. of that. Yeah. yeah um Depending on depending on where you are in the country, um, for example, in the um, where I grew, I grew up mostly in the south, and the, the government schools, though um, not as they're not really as as good as the private schools, but still they say how in terms of um, discipline and uh, they're, they're quite disciplined. What we don't have very much are the the teaching facilities, you know, we don't have so much, but as regards the discipline in the school, it's uh, quite uh, strict and uh, they're not in any way liberal, they're not liberal in terms of the discipline of the students, yeah. but we don't have um, things to teach with, they don't have much facility, like the lab is not, uh, but, but that's, that's the... Uh, uh, How is that different from the North? In the north, yeah, in the north they have all those things, but the problem with them is they don't, the people don't uh, go to school. They don't, they, they, unlike us in the south where there are more students than there are schools, but in the north there are more schools than there are students. Why, why, why is that just a population issue? It's, I think it's a religion because of the Islam and the culture. They never like to go to school, so they have to encourage them to, to go to school. Wow, that's, that's interesting. It, when you say that there's a so there's a religious divide in the country between north and south. Yes. Is it 
when you when you think is it like Pakistan and, and India where you have this sort of division that most of the people live north of a certain area and, and most of the other religion lives in a, another part? Yeah, you might say that because, for example, in Nigeria, the, the northern part is there are more Muslims, more there are more Muslims than there are Christians, but in the south, just so the, the opposite, you have more Christians, different kinds of. You know, Protestant and Catholic, and so they, there's more of that. Than, yeah, this is you could say that there's a divide there. Yeah. Has this historically always been the case in Nigeria? Yes, that's always been the case. Yeah. So when you when you think about how um, people are elected in Nigeria, do they have to take a middle road, or has it always been Christian presidents? How how has the country been governed given this religious divide? Well, um, yeah, the, um, first of all, we, we've not had so many years of democracy. It has, it has always been, we, we have more military rulers than we have civilian rulers. And the, 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 the dictators have always, most of them have always come from the north. Mm -hmm. Except one or two cases where we had one from the southeast and another from the south or west. Uh, but with the, because the reason is that there, there are more northerners in the south in the army than in the than you know than south than every other part of the every other um, part of the country. So, but in terms of that, it has been more than the north. But it, when when we come to the election, um, it's been sort of balanced because um, we've had but two or three or three or four from the north and. Uh, I've had. Uh, I know that this is this is the, the the current president is the 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 I'll say the second really really the third person from the south to rule the country. So with the with the balance of when well, you say a lot more dictators are from the north, yeah. but it looks like it's somewhat balanced: three or four from the north, three from the south, and mm -hmm. in the de in democratic times. Mm -hmm. Um, how do those rulers uh, deal with the religious issue in the country? Is the idea we don't talk about it so that before we don't get into trouble? Or do they have to say nice things to both sides? Yeah, they have to say nice things to both sides and, you know, <laughs> yeah, be friendly to both the Muslims and the, and the Christians. And the, yeah, we, uh, for example, in the policies, in, in holy, like when they give a uh, Public holidays, national holidays. We have we observe both the Christian and the Muslim holidays. We have the Easter and the Christmas. We have the this the Eid Salah and some other uh, Muslim holidays. So we, they do both. You know, they don't lean more on one religion than on the other. But you can tell I me mean, from who is ruling. You can tell what he would like to do. You know, if he had his way. But usually, the the the, the situation. Dictates the um, the the issue for him, so it doesn't uh, really. This is how they keep the peace. Yes, yeah, that's right? how they do. Have there been religious riots before? Have there been breakouts of that in the past? Oh, yes, yeah, it's been. Yeah, um, I think I remember the once uh, in the uh, two thousand and two, there was a really uh, uh, really bad religious uh, crisis it began in the north and. Uh, um, more the Christians were. I mean, I don't. I don't know what started. What started it, but it ended up with the Christians getting killed, loss of them, and uh, some getting injured. So the those. I mean, the, the the Christians in the south now took uh, decided to take vengeance and, and they killed most of the Muslims, mm -hmm. many of the Muslims. But you know, there's been things like that. But the, that that was the until this present crisis. The, that was the the biggest until. The, the crisis we I, they have they, we have now, because yeah. right now in fact they still the, the, the Christians in the north still get uh, uh, they still get uh, persecuted. Yeah, churches burned. And yeah, that churches kind of thing. burned. Yeah. So does the government not take a stance on that? Are they just trying to hope that it figures figures itself out, or are they going in and trying to stop it? No, they do. They they they, they go in. They try to stop it, but you know, usually it. Usually, it turns out that the, the, the terrorists actually just are more equipped sometimes than the, than the government. So, they do their best, but you know, usually it's not enough, you see. So, so they, yeah, they, they make effort to quell the, the problem, but. 
most times it doesn't really they don't do enough because they don't have the resources they don't have or they don't put enough uh, resources like the manpower and they, they don't put enough to to end it uh, sooner so so but right now what they're doing now is that they put some military people military soldiers in the region and uh, they try while they negotiate peace with the terrorists they still try to stop them on the streets that's what they're doing right now to to solve the, the current uh, crisis it's so interesting, we're here in the United States, it's so uh, soft and easy and people over there are actually dying for being Christians. You yeah. know, it's, a, it's a reality over there. This kind of climate, I suppose when, I, when I'm hearing about that, it's actually a place where people, I would say, take their religion seriously. So it's probably very, very different from what you see here in the United States. Tell us about... Um, how you came to know tradition. So it sounds like you had a, a decent Nova, Nova sort of upbringing and, and you went to this government school. Uh, where along the line did, um, I, and I suppose that's the second question is, how did a vocation potentially enter into that? So both questions. Yeah, um, first of all, you know, like every other, why didn't we, we grew up, you know, going to church and serving the masses, you know, we saw the masses and the, trying to be, you know, devout uh, Catholics with uh, joining lots of pious groups. But even then, you know, it was just that, uh, yeah, we took it very serious, but we never, to us, that was, that was it. That Nova Soto was the only religion we knew, I mean, for a long, for a long time. So I think I actually began to know about the, the traditional movement in my college days. Yeah, because, um, before then, you know, but before then I wanted to be a priest, at least on, since, 19, since uh, 1996. And uh, um, I was, I, from then I, had, I felt that I had the, uh, the vocation. So, but I didn't know about the traditional movement. So I, but, so I, I, but I have an uncle who is a, a novice sort of priest. So I met him and I told him that I want to join the seminary. And he said no, that I should hold on until I'm done with college. Because um, then you have more, op you have you can, you can yes, you have more options. You see, so so I, I and I went to the college, but it was in the college that I began to realize to know at least one about the, the 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 church before Vatican II. But until then, I never knew, and we never ever heard of that. You see, so how did you? What were you taking a particular class, or were you just doing some reading on your own? Yeah, um, the, no, um, yeah. That was on my own, but mainly because in the college I attended, we had a very strong Catholic group. Um, we have, a, we have a, a Catholic society, in fact, really, really strong. And uh, we had um, what you would see: we had the masses, the rosaries every day. And this was, I said, and because my school and my part of the country, being the southeast, is there are more Catholics than every other religion. In fact, almost no Muslims, but more Catholics. It was easy for us to get a feel of the, the Catholic religion uh, in the school. So we had priests, chaplains coming to. So, so we, 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 um, we really, really took the faith serious. But because of that, you know, once you start taking it serious, you want to learn more, right? So, so after that, um, you know, we began to study. We, I, I, we joined, I joined, the, we joined, we joined groups, really, Marian groups, like. Legion of Mary and the, what we call the Queen of All Hearts, which is St. Louis and Montfort's uh, group. So, and in those groups, because, and that is the, that, that is the characteristics of, of, of the, at least that I know of in Nigeria, that those Marian groups tend to be very conservative. So, with three things, you know, things you know, that concern the church, we read about the saints and, you know, different kinds of you know, things. So, but, after that, you have to you, you that's after you attend the, the gathering. I mean, you get an interest to study more about that. So, so that's what we did. So we went back and we studied. And, and I mean, what began to occur to us was that, you know, when we come to these gatherings, we are told lots of things that really really attract us. But somehow we don't see we don't see them practice in the in the general Catholic body in the. So we wonder, I mean, okay, they tell us that you should be very devout at mass, there are some saints, we're very devout at mass, but 
you go to the, the Novo Zelo Mass, you don't see that um, atmosphere that you think the saints have, you know, that you were told that they have. So we, we wonder, and uh, I think that got us curious and we, we knew about, that's where really, where we began to know about the traditional Mass, and that with the Mass that the saints attended, was really different from what uh, we have now. So we wondered about that, and uh, you know, I know we, we got the responses. I know that um, they gave us different reasons why things had to change, but still, it was still, it was really not um, um, a sufficient reason that they, that they gave us. So we, we made further inquiries, and uh, we began to, to uh, um, become more and more interested in the, in the traditional mass. We didn't know of the groups, you know, SSPS, we just wanted to know more tra tra the traditional mass, you see, so, and, uh, and uh, you know, as it happens, I was not alone, there are lots of other people in the same, who have the same kind of mindset, you see, so, and, um, so, and Reverend, when you say us, I'm assuming you're talking about the groups, you, there were some of your friends, yes, who were, friends. Involved, were you mostly male, was it co-ed, because it was part of the university? What, what, what was the makeup of your group? Yeah, um, um, all, yeah the, the group that uh, got interested in the drive, they were mostly men, actually. In fact, there were just one or two young ladies, and uh, uh, so far, they, and, you know, people they were not really very serious, but so just us men that were, because in Nigeria, women try to, they call some women wait, they don't usually, they're not really outspoken, even in the college, as, um, as men are. So, what they do is that they always they hold back until they see what, whatever the men does. So, that's just, I think that must have affected them. So, we, for, for, so our group, we're just mainly uh, men, you see. So, there were no, uh, usually almost no, no lady there who had that kind of uh, interest. So, but, you know, uh, we studied and uh, with my, you know, Augusto Mary also, who was also, he's also among us. So, he, so but we still continue to be in the North, sort of in the conservative, because we, we thought that if we try as much as possible to, you know, to do, th even though we're in the North, sort of, to do things. You're going to elevate yeah, the North, yeah, sort of yeah, that, that, yeah, so we, 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 th we thought that, that we might, you know, do the same, we don't really have to, that, that we can be good you know, Catholics in the in the in the Novus Ordo. But it didn't always work out because we always because of that we always had to we had, had a clash with the other with the bigger body and sometimes okay at mass okay you don't want to do things that that is the custom you know and you it becomes there's a, there's a, there's a, there was always a conflict. But we thought even then we thought we were doing what the Holy Father said, you know, that, uh, you know, the whatever is done is this abuses, you know, that why should you play with the game, why, why should you play with the band, and these are all abuses. And because of the thought we abuses, and the Holy Father did not know about it, we never did it. But, you know, well, over the years we discovered that that's actually what was called for by the Holy so, so, but what happened was that after that, we, we heard about some traditional uh, mass somewhere, in the same state but a distance and then uh, this was the St. Peter's uh, Fraternity so we decided to, to go there on some Sundays so we, as a group um, we were about let's say seven or eight of us as a group every Sunday we, 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 we get a car and we drive we pay and we go to the, there and uh, how far away is it? Um, from my school it would be 50 minutes okay. from my school, yes. So that was the first time you learned that you have to drive to go to get to a Latin Mass? Yeah, that was actually the first time. And the, actually the first time I saw the, uh, the the Latin Mass was when I was there. So we, you know, we go there, we're, we're very impressed by the difference and everything. So, I mean, we we, we, we came back and, we, and when, on this room we couldn't go. The the of the Mass looked so you know, ordinary to us and do it. Tell, but, tell me a little bit about how you were struck that first time, because I know, I think all of us remember for who are known as Ordo, we went to the first time mm -hmm. and we thought, oh, I don't know, you could say there's no going back mm -hmm. or, but how did you, how did you feel, what were you thinking about when you went to that first traditional Mass? Well, actually, yeah, oh, I, well, I went there actually on the, on the, 
and remember that you know, the first thing like was, there's this group what they call the precious blood and the, they have this what they call the, the vision all night so that it ends with the mass so yeah when I saw the, the priest come in and everything so silent and almost as if nothing was happening on the altar you, know, you, 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 when you, you don't know what to expect some things the things to be said but everything was just done almost in silence so Oh, well, it felt, first of all, it felt odd, you know, it felt very, quite new to me, but, you know, because I have been preparing myself, maybe unconsciously, by reading, so, I was not really, it was not a big shock to me, because, um, somehow, I have I prepared myself for it by, we've been reading, you see, we've been studying, and we've been looking at pictures from, from the books, so when it happened, yeah, it was new, certainly, but it was not, um, it didn't take us, it was not difficult for us to, to adapt to it because um, so we have already reached the conclusion that something was that something was wrong, you see, with it. So when it happened, it was not a big shock, you know. We, we took it and as that was what was, it's meant to be, even though we don't know what's going on, but we know that's what it should be, you see. So that, that was the impression we, um, I had, you see. And, uh, <laughs> so, so now you've gone, when you come back, do you, I'm sure you were probably going to some masses during the week normally when you were there. Did you find that you had difficulty going now? Did you still go and then on Sundays you went to the traditional mass? What happened? Yeah, I still went because, you know, if you, are, if you, if you grow up being a Catholic, you don't, you, it's difficult for you to stay at home when everybody else is going to church. And this is a school, this is a school where in, where every, every Catholic and the people like to, you know, people go, you see, most, you don't want to be, and, people, and, you, and, and, and at the stage at which I knew about this traditional mass, I was in, almost towards the end of my stay in the school, and then uh, I was, you know, I had a, a position, like, um, I was kind of a secretary, so I was kind of well known, you see, so, but, so if I didn't go, and I stayed back, and somebody passes by and sees me around, it would be... So, you know, those factors, you see, and more the fact that I don't stay back and spend the whole day, the rest of the day in the church, or spend the whole morning at home, it, you feel odd, you see, you don't want to... So, so I went, you know, I, I still... I went because it was... Uh, uh, I just... The habit, you see, the habit of uh, going to church every, every day. So, so, you come to the end of your school term, and then what was the next step for you? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, after that, it was. I think it was. This was the, my final year. After we saw the the, the the we've seen the traditional mass as as it should as it should be, and. Uh, yeah, I began to reconsider. Then I knew, see, after after I knew that I could not become go to the seminary as a normal sort of seminarian. You see, the point was now how to break it out to my uncle who was uh, who was expected me. They, they all knew. They all and the thing that they didn't, they not, they all they don't know about this. It's quite a mystery. It's secret. Yeah, and I mean, even the whole traditional movement is not known even now. Even so. So when I imagine the reaction when you, if you tell them that you, you want to become a traditional, they will think that you, that you. If I was even called that I was that I maybe have gone crazy or something mm -hmm. like that. So, so yeah, the problem was now how do I tell them that? Uh, so, but but the fact was this: I could not go to no other seminar again. That was clear. But we still thought that the FSSP was you know the correct thing. The way to go. Yes. Then we when we we studied and. Uh, that we discovered the SSPX. This was, we all do this, you know, we study, or somebody studies, oh, and it tells, do you, do you, have you heard of this? And we study, and ah, okay, that, 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 that uh, S, um, FSSP is still no good photo, I mean, even though they do it, but SSPX is not no good photo because they are not, ah, then that is, that's better, right? So, so, so we, uh, we, we left, and we, we, we and unfortunately for there was a priest who, who got, who just, Got um, who who just joined the SS, SSPX from the Novo Sodo, so he was trying to get. Uh, so he, that, then he was in Switzerland, preparing to come for his first mass in Nigeria. So we all eagerly waited, awaited him. But as it happens, uh, we got in touch through the internet with uh, Bishop Dolan. 
you see, and uh, I think I think uh, after that um, it was all set. Well, I was going to say how how did, you were waiting for the SSPX, but were you doing just some reading on the internet, and that's how you got connected to Bishop Dolan? Yes, it was true. Uh, well, no, we no, we we always st you know, browsing. Okay. First of all, yeah, through the studies on the internet, we studied about different groups, different traditional groups, and uh, okay, why? Um, so we, I think we, we, what we did was we read. Okay, well, there's a group, so we study about them, and we know. Okay, why is why is for example why is SS, uh, SSPX not really the, the best place, or why is it the St. Peter Fraternity? You know, we studied those. You see, so. So it was through one of those studies that somehow we came across an article, an article written by you know Bishop Dolan, Bishop Sambon, and Father Chikada. Then uh, um, that's where we began to realize that there's really more than just the FS FSSP. But still, you see, before, remember at this stage, celibacanism for us didn't mean anything for us. If I the first time I heard of the vacancy was from Chris Ferrara when he wrote against it is in uh, in the Fatima uh, uh, Crusader. So he wrote it, and you know, that's the first time I ever heard the word expression. And I you know, then I was still in the, this was still in the school. When I came back, I was all full of anger. How could people say that there is no pope? And I was full of anger, and you know, well, it's a, but then somebody told me, a friend of mine, Augustine, actually. If I have read the response to Ferrara's article by the time of the of her people, the Diamond Brothers, mm -hmm. and uh, I read that and uh, I was quite impressed and that convinced me about this uh, Vacantist uh, movement. Then and I read, we read Fertikara's response also to Chris Ferrara's and I think that, that, was, that was the end for us after we read that. Just, and we, you know, we, we just got convinced and uh, we didn't, it, it was just there, the facts were there and everything was explained. It made all the sense in the, in the world for us. So, so we, we left the SSPS and we left the St. Peter's and we, we didn't go to any place again. Even the, the, the one in, the, in the, the school, we stopped entirely and as a group we stopped. Uh, some people didn't join us. After we, after we stopped every, every kind of mass available, some people couldn't do, go further. They, 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 they kept going to the to the FS, the St. Peter's uh, Mass, and uh, we told the priest that the, the St. Peter's priest that he has to get reordained and he's not a validly ordained priest, and he was not happy with us. So I'm sure he didn't yeah, react. So, well. <laughs> so he, we we left, and then um, and that's it. We we stayed. We, what, what we now did was that we came as a group. We every Sunday we got we meet. We we just read some things on the missal. We say the rosary. And sometimes we say it's some part of the office that we can say, and that was it. That's what we did until. So is that group? I, I had a chance to talk to Father Larrabee uh, last year, and he talked about his visit out there. Is that that group? Yes, that that, yes the group, one of the one of, one, the one of the girls. Yes. Okay, so you got in touch with Bishop Dolan, and I'm sure then there must have been a fairly complicated question of integration of coming to the United States, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, before that we had to talk about how to get a priest to Nigeria while we were still in Nigeria. So he helped us by getting a priest from South Africa, Father Leslie, who is, uh, who is late now. Um, Father Leslie used to be an SSPX priest and then became set of a contest? Yes. So he, he came twice to Nigeria and uh, attended to us. And, uh, but um, that was before he, before he died. So it was all due to Bishop Dolan. Bishop Dolan sent him and after that, after the second time we came, in the next year, which was 2009, um, uh, I no, the first time was 2006. My first, so we began to make some attempts to come. You see, at first it was uh, there were two of us, and both of us we were, we were both uh, denied the visa. That was in 2006. Then the next time we tried was in um, 2008, and. Um, the same thing, you know, I, was, I was not given the visa, but my, my friend, William, who's gone now back to Nigeria, got the visa and he's stayed there for, for a while. Then I tried again last 2009, and that's where I got the visa and I, I came over for the study. But between that time, Shabulan has always been taking care of us, sending us books and you know, sacramentals and other things. So 
he has been he has been always been doing his best to help us. Yeah. Must have been interesting for him that first time contact uh, email or phone call yeah. from Nigeria, mm -hmm. yeah. um, because you know Mexico was that that first part. It's a one mission area, and then all the way across the ocean over there. Um, so. How long, when, when did you start here at seminary? I started in 2009, October, October 2009. And, uh, and you've already had gone to college and so you've had some, you had some academic background coming into the seminary. Yes, I was still in college then. So tell us a little bit about what is going to happen. Um, obviously you're going to be ordained later this year, but how how will that ministry work? Well, you'll you'll work do some more work here in the United States. I want you to tell us about that, and then what what do you foresee as the ministry will be? What will it be like in Nigeria? Yeah, um, first of all, um, I think after my ordination in uh, in November, I will have to still I'll, I'll I'll be here for a while. I mean to 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 learn the. To, um, to, I mean to learn how to be a parish priest and, and other related things but I know that I'll be here and even while I'm here I'll be making visits you know, to Nigeria. I think the plan for now is that there's going to be, right now we have three different centers in Nigeria and uh, the plan is that I'm going, when I go I'll spend some time, an extended amount of time and visit the three places. Are they all in the south? Yeah, they're all in the south, yes. So I'll visit all three places, you know, spend some time, then come back. I think, I think that's the plan for now. How and big are the congregations? Are they all the same size? Is one smaller? Is one much bigger? I think they will, I would say that um, they're all almost of the same size. Um, each of them will be at least let's say, 20, 30, around that number. Yeah, But they're all Apparently, of the same, almost the same, but it's, you know, almost of the same size. Is it like your original group where it's mostly men? No, no. Right now, we have we had quite a, people joined, and uh, there's lots of lots of uh, female ladies there, and uh, yeah, quite a lot of them. Yeah, they joined over the years. How how is the local? How are the local How do the local Catholics react? Because you. I'm sure you know now, if you don't already, but Sedevacantism is the worst thing, you know, ever, yeah? So if you're over there, how does the Novus Ordo, how do the SSPX, how do they deal with you all there? Is it, is it uh, antagonistic, or do they just ignore you, or...? You know, the, we don't have actually, in terms of yes, we don't have an, a, a big SSPX presence yet. There's just one priest for now, and... Uh, who is actually a friend of us and who is who has surprisingly had a, a leaning a, a leaning towards set of accounts. Maybe you can maybe you can grab them. Yes. So yeah, we we have been hoping to do that. So so it doesn't it doesn't really um, him as for him it doesn't there's no antagonism between us and, and him. So there's no so but what. I would ask the guys in the, the Novus Ordo group because we don't have it. We don't have a, a presence yet, even though we don't have a big presence yet in Nigeria. So far, we are too we are too insignificant to be a problem to them. You see, because we know there's no structure. You see, yet in, in extravagant, extravagant structure yet in uh, in Nigeria. You see. So the priest on, we only have the, the gather when the priest comes and they go they have the usually the meetings and stuff but still it's still obscure as regards to the rest of the, the compared to the rest of the group. Um you're you're going to do some extended trips and obviously you'll I think you'll probably spend some time at some American churches here to yes. kind of get get a feel for things. Mm -hmm. Are you going to set up a, a main church there and try to service the others, or is each group going to try to set up you know, maybe their own building and their own school? Is there a long-term vision, or are everybody still thinking about it? Trying yes, actually, you know, we don't have it. We, this is, we, 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 there's no long-term plan yet, you see. Um, 
right now what what we, what we can do what we, we have the option now of using hotels or renting houses for the duration of like when I go we have rented houses that we we save while I'm there you see that's what that's as far as we can look now we don't have so much we are not looking so much beyond that now because everything depends on having the structure having the being recognized as a group you know in the country and so but for now we are we're not looking so much beyond renting houses in the three places and uh, using them for the masses as and we're keeping some things there that we might need but we can't take it from place to place so that, that's that's as far as we can look at now you see what all the we everything every, every other thing depends on you know we, we need to have some kind of a legal um, statue and sure. Yeah. How far apart are those uh, churches, or I should say, communities? How far apart are they? Um, yeah, from Lagos to let's say to Uwere, which is uh, it's about seven hours drive. Yeah, then from Uwere to Potakot, three three hours at the most, I think. Yeah. So that that's that's how far they are, and we, we drive mostly. We don't, we don't have. To, we don't fly. And the roads in Nigeria are not like American no, roads. No, they're not like this. That's really very really good, like American roads. Well, that's quite a bit of distance yeah. uh, between them. Um, what uh, you're you're now here. You're at a set of the seminary. Um, when you look at your studies and you look at your time in the Novus Ordo. Can you think about, you know, perhaps what's your biggest surprise as, or what have been your biggest lessons as you've been here at the seminary and reflect back at how different the Novus Ordo was? What have been, sometimes I, I, I tell people, I didn't know about the social reign of Christ until I became a traditional Catholic. I had never heard of it. I didn't know it was a, an idea or a doctrine. Only after I became traditional Catholic did I learn about it. When you look at some of the things that you learned in seminary, um, and you reflect on what you didn't know from the Novus Ordo. Can you? Are there one or two things that you think are surprising, or that were very important to you that you learned? Hmm. Um, in, from my, in terms of the studies, I'll say that um, um, it's I've been mostly in the in the area of the liturgy, because um, being the, being from a conservative society. The things that we are taught, usually even at home and the culture, is not very different in terms of the discipline and the you know the, the life. I'm talking about just the training, the, the, the regular training, not the, so there's not so there's no big change for me in that regard. But for me, the change was in the liturgy itself. You know, coming coming from a novus novus ordo where you have things. Done in a very different way, the the mass and you know the some of the prayers and coming to a place where you have just only the, the, the traditional mass and the so. But besides that, um, there's been no you know cultural wise and training. There's been no no big difference. The just for me, I would say just the, the the liturgy and the and the fact that. In the, the, the difference in the sacraments that you could the difference between the, the, the Novo Soto religion and the and the and the, the traditional Catholic religion. But I think I think I wouldn't I wouldn't say like what would like for example I didn't study anything about philosophy or in school. I mean I did that but we didn't we did, because I'm, I'm, I'm I was more of a of a science student. We didn't I didn't really care so much about can't or the so I would, hearing about them here or hearing about the Thomistic philosophy now, for me nothing was upset in my in my mind because I never knew those before. You know, even when we did philosophy in school, we studied about I was lucky that the, my professors were all Catholics, so and they were very quite conservative in the in the philosophy they taught. So there was nothing contrary in terms of my studies, at least in philosophy that, that, um, that I did, because I didn't do much in any case than, than what I'm doing now. So there's, in that aspect, there's no, no very big change because 
I didn't know. I didn't know anything until I came, or the few I know was not were not contradicted here. Okay. Uh, is there any Nigerian cuisine that you miss while you're here in the United States? Oh, I miss, <laughs> I miss all of them. In fact. Is there a favorite a favorite dish um, that you miss? Is there a particular type of what what kind what what is the cuisine like compared to you know what we have here in the United States? Do they use more chicken? Do they use more sauces? What's the what's the food like? Um, first of all, we use more spices at home than, than, you, than we do here. That's 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 a, uh, a major difference. So, like Indian cooking, where there's a lot of spices. Yes, we have a lot of spices, and um, yeah, um, and we don't use sugar <laughs> in cooking. That's that's for me was I think a, a big difference, you know. And um, and an important factor for me is the dining. <laughs> It's a different life, it's a different world entirely. At least in the maybe in, in the normal, the, the normal Nigerian family, the way the manner of eating is very different from what you find in a, in a typical American family. You know, the rules and stuff are not so strict. <laughs> I mean, not so. It's more. It's more relaxed. Yes, yeah, more relaxed, and then um, you know, yeah. It's, it's more relaxed at home than it is here, so it, it, I had to learn how to how to adapt to the, to the differences here when I came. But yeah, I think yeah. But the meal, uh, besides those, um, the, uh, well, and the food we cook, the kind of food that we cook, a lot of differences, and the way we cook them, where, where we have rice and we have rice, but we cook them a different way than um, when you do here and. Uh, you know, just uh, yeah, and then uh, I think that's it. Uh, yeah, it's it's, a, it's and the, what you, what you call things and what we call them quite different. Like when you say soup, for us, it's, soup is a very diff, very different from what you have what what you call soup. And when you say stew, for us, it's a different kind of thing you cook. Than you call. So, so when we say we say soup, it makes something a bit more watery. Is it yes. thicker for you? The soup? It, it's thick. And um, and um, it can be watery too, but mainly that they are thick and uh, and with soup for us never go alone. Like you, you don't you don't just eat it soup. Like <laughs> so we eat soup because soup is meant for something else. You, you can't have a soup alone. Okay. So it's something to eat with something else. That's what it means for us. And stew it always means for rice. Stew like a curry. Yes, with tomatoes and pepper and so that's what it means for us. Mm, that's interesting. <laughs> so those are two uh, in the West and in America. Those are standalone dishes, and for you, they are parts of a meal. Yes, different parts of a meal. But like I said, I'm sure you miss it. Yeah, I do. <laughs> uh, have you tried to ever cook any for the no <laughs> the South Americans? No, I don't know how how it was. I just I don't know how to try. It. Um, well. Uh, Reverend, I, I obviously we're very happy to have you here, and we're looking forward to your ordination. We're looking mm -hmm. forward to being there and, and supporting you. And I think that many um, viewers of the video um, will want an opportunity to support your work, or will will want to know how. And as you said, we've got to work out the legal matters first. Mm -hmm. uh, Nigerian government is quite different from American government mm -hmm. uh, as to how that works. So. When that is up and running, hopefully we'll, we'll let people know about how they can support your work and um, help your communities grow. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you.